Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're again here today uh, after a remarkable event over the, over the last two days. It's been uh, an achievement for everyone, trying to really link everyone around the world to this uh, major event and health summit related to digital health. It's truly been a, a wonderful experience, exceptionally remarkable that we see how many people have been really connected around the globe to really view this from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. With this, I would like to thank on behalf of you, His Excellency Dr. Tofiq Rabia, the Minister of Health, Saudi Arabia, for chairing the final session of the summit. On behalf of the organizing committee, we appreciate his support and leadership, and it is indeed an honor to have Your Excellency today for this final event. We're really overwhelmed with the level of enthusiasm across the globe as over 135,000 participants registered virtually in this important event and more than 300 non-registered viewers over multiple social media channels has really watched this event. This is truly remarkable. This is really one of the largest largest virtual events that we ever witnessed. Uh, the, the strong interest is a reflection of a high caliber faculty, advisory board, and a comprehensive program, as well as the timeliness and relevance of these topics that we have discussed in this summit. It also reflects the global reach demonstrated by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in its assumption of the G20 presidency 2020. Indeed, it was evidenced by this summit how technology can link, connect the global scientific community in an extraordinary way. So we really achieved this through technology that all of the, specifically the health scientific community around the globe has been connected. This link is so essential to succeed in implementing evidence-based innovations to protect humanity from the danger of pandemics. We're really privileged to hear from all speakers, chairs, and co-chairs of the session, some of their amazing achievements and excellent initiatives across the different disciplines. The active participation of the attendee is remarkable and has been enriched and has enriched our understanding, as well as opened, in some instances, really new horizons. We will exert every effort to have a connected world through digital health in fighting current and future pandemics. I would like to thank every one of you for this invaluable contribution in making this summit an event to be remembered. I will move on to really present the final recommendations, what we have labeled as Riyadh Declaration, the role of the digital health in fighting current and future pandemics. I'm really pleased to be working over the last few weeks. We had more than seven to 10 panel meetings with members from around the world. I'm pleased to present the names of the people who have really participated with, with, with us in Saudi Arabia, with the organizing committee chaired by myself. I would like to start with Professor Mahmoud Adel, Professor David Bates, Professor George Crooks, Professor Tom, Tom Dunwood, Dr. Hani Jokhdar, Professor Michael Kidd, Professor Michael Clagg, Professor Olshin Lee, Dr. Ali McDad, Professor Kayara Poletto, uh, Dr. Curie, and, and, and last but not least, Luis Chapper. As well, the team here in Saudi Arabia, myself, Dr. Ali Katami, Dr. Raid Al Hazmi, and Dr. Jude Abdel Jawad. With the key priorities that we have worked around over the last, as I said, few meetings looking at crisis and risk communication, 
health data governance, quality, policy, and regulation, and it is really implementable use in practice. Established health intelligence, adoption of interoperable digital technology, scalability, and sustainability. Enhanced quality, enhance the quality and effectiveness of digital technology for improved patient and population outcomes. And more importantly, I think research and innovation, which we have witnessed during this crisis and pandemic, that really evolved around technology, that we really moved forward ahead, and we should really all of us share these different, really learned lessons, really admirable outcomes for research and innovation. And what we mean by this is applied research and applied innovation. Few, few core principles has been adopted during our discussion. Inequalities in digital health capabilities and access are experienced at an individual, local, national, and global levels. We should strive to decrease inequalities, inequities, I'm sorry, and embrace digital inclusion. Digital health should enable and empower people as well as health and care systems to prevent and treat communicable and incommunicable all diseases, I mean, to sustain wellness. Real-time access to high-quality data is essential to provide accurate science-based information, develop policy, promote health, deliver health, deliver health and care, support efficient and effective public health measures to foster rapid research and actionable outcome. Use up-to-date and trusted information is necessary, to, is necessary for individuals to exercise their responsibility to follow public health recommendation during a pandemic. Collaboration between public and private institutions, research and innovation should be prioritized during pandemics and promote access to data. I think this is very important. <clears throat> Digital health must preserve the fundamental rights of privacy and consent. We wanted to conclude our core principles by really somehow a definition of what we used as health system. Include all public, private, academic organizations that provide health and care. Recommendations has been really reviewed a few times, and I'm pleased to announce them. Number one is effectively implement data-driven and evidence-based protocols for clear and effective communication with common messaging in order to build citizens' trust. Work with global stakeholders to confront mess, mess and disinformation propagation through social media platform and mass media. Establish standard global minimal data sets for public health data reporting, as well as data governance structure tailored specifically to communicable diseases. Ensure countries have established priority in relation to data and digital health, in particular, digital maturity and infrastructure. Enable health and care organization with the necessary technology to transform high quality, timely collection, timely data collection and sharing for applied health intelligence. Cultivate a health and care workforce with the knowledge, skills, and training in data and technology. Data and technologies has to be always shared, that we really have to be really prepared as healthcare workforce to be able to have the basic skills and, of course, upskilling of these, of these skills. Required to face current and future public health challenges. Ensuring surveillance system combine an effective public health response with respect to ethical and privacy principles. Develop digital personal tools and services to support comprehensive health programs we mean by that disease prevention, testing, management, and vaccination program globally. Last but not least, and more important, to maintain continuum fund 
maintain, continue to fund, and innovate surveillance data systems as a core part of the connected global health system for rapid preparedness and optimal global response. This declaration is a call to action to create the infrastructure to share good digital health evidence-based practices and real-time high-quality data that encompasses local and global level to enable more health system and countries to have an actionable insight. Digital and data technology will promote the coordinated development of shared global public health policies and resilient health and care systems. This is in order to specifically perform better in future pandemic and other health challenges. Thank you very much.